reading your story and looking at your book, I mean, this is food is in your bones. It is. Yeah, it's funny. My, my mom is a chef and my dad was a musician, so I'm kind of half and half. <laughs> like right down the middle. But, yeah. I mean, food is kind of... Is your, is your passion, really? It and is. almost the music stopped you being able to live that passion for a while. Well, it was just, it wasn't so much, it was just, I mean, yeah, it's a full-time job. It's like, it takes over everything and touring and doing all these things. And, um, but every time I was on the road, I would always, you know, stop off at a friend's house and be like, hey, I'm in Amsterdam, can I come over and cook after the show? And, you know, so I started doing a lot of that and I was like, I just, I want to do this more. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so, so... Do you, when you went back to music, because you did have a break, so did you reluctantly go back to music? No, actually, it's funny because the, I, I left music kind of just like, I'm done with this, I'm exhausted, I need a break. Not even music, just the music business. And I think, um, yeah, I think it was really taking time away that allowed me to come back to it and to really feel a sense of like, happiness and joy about it again because I felt like I don't have to do it. There's something else that I can do that yeah. I really love. And so I do this because I want to, not because this is the only thing I can do. And there's a lot of joy in what you're doing today. I know. Yeah. So what's how you make it? There is. Okay, so I'm going to make something called acapuria. And what's really fun about this for me specifically is the fact that this is my grandmother's recipe originally. Mm -hmm. And I, it was kind of like, it's like, you know, when you graduate from culinary school, it's, there's like a I guess like your dissertation or your like, it's yeah. your ending thing. And so, you know, you have to do something in a very French style in a, you know, high-end kind of gourmet way, but it has to be something that speaks to you. And so I called my mom and I was like, I need this recipe. And all the women, I'm like, they're like, you're not, she can't do it, it's, it's too much. <laughs> they're like, don't tell her. I was like, are you guys kidding me? <laughs> they're like, no, no, no. So I was like, just get, give it up, tell me. <laughs> so, you know, it went through like the chain of like, my grandmother called my mom and then my mom, you know, all this stuff. So finally, yes, I got the recipe. Of course, I tweaked it to do my own thing, but um, it's great because then I also, I got an A plus, which is great. Well, oh, well done. done. <laughs> so what is it? What's yeah, what it? is okay, it? So it's called, it's an acapulia. So basically I'll show you our, our components here. This is, here you guys call it cassava. It's also known as juca. It's a root, it's very starchy, it's kind of like potato. Wow. Um, we've got some prawns here. And then this here is our already made sofrito, but this is what it's made of, basically. So sofrito, we, know, we, know, we cook regularly with the Italian kind of sofrito, sort of carrots and celery and Which onion. Is, yeah, yeah, very French. So that's like, so French, um, it's like a mirepoix. So basically, yeah, it's like carrots carrots and celery and onions. This is cilantro, um, we've got garlic, onions, some oregano, and some bell peppers. Right. And that's this here all kind of in the food processor all done. Cilantro being uh, coriander for us. Coriander is it, for uh, you. Yes, okay. it is, absolutely. Okay, so what I'm gonna have you do, Philip, is this here is our um, cassava. It's without all of the sofrito and seasoning. This is our cheesecloth, so you're gonna kind of just pour some in there and you're gonna squeeze out. Is that it's the got a lot of thing? natural milk. If that's the root. Yes. What is that? That's this. That's that. Yeah. So it's grated. Oh, right. So wow. do you, how much shall I put in here? Put like half in there. It looks okay. like a soft cheese. Yeah, it does, Doesn't right? It? it does. It looks like it actually absolutely looks like a soft cheese. Does it smell like a soft cheese? And then like so root. here we are going to like add root. our shrimp. Yeah, it's like it's honestly like potato. It's just a, it's a little bit more starchy. Um, and then you've got chopped, um, so in your sofrito, which we've discussed, you're putting your prawns in there. So yeah, right now we're putting our prawns in here. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. We've got our, uh, let's see. Wow, look at that. Yeah, so it's got a lot of milk in it, so you want to get all that out because you want it to be able to hold, and you don't want it to be so wet that it, you know, it pops in the oil. Can and you then this here, a bit, aren't you? Because you've yeah. got your pop-up restaurant, which actually I my do. friend Chiara went to the other night. She said it was brilliant. Yeah, she had a great time. Oh, good. And you could, is this on the menu? No, it's not, actually. Ah. It's not. We have a lot of other really fantastic things on the menu, though. It's kind of like a, so I paired up with um, Andy Taylor from uh, Le Bon. He's already got, like, his own thing going and they do burgers and kind of really artisan nice burgers like that and so we got together and we do I guess it's like it's burgers and then like world street food because obviously I've been traveling a lot with touring for the past you know yeah. forever <laughs> all those different flavors so this here I just wanted to show you this here is called um anato or it's like achote and this is the paste and so a lot of different cultures use this from Asian cultures to a lot of Latin American what cultures it? it's a seed oh, um, and they use it to to color, naturally color things and give it this really It looks like when my son comes color. back from football on AstroTurf and this is all in his trainers and his right. pockets. Yeah, I've, yeah. Did you just eat that? I've seen that too. It's a very what is pungent it? flavor by itself. I should have told you that. <laughs> Not your favorite? I don't know what that face is. I'm trying to figure out what taste that is. That's a unique it's taste it is all a of its own. Absolutely, it definitely is. And so we use that, um, we'll take a tiny bit here. A little bit of it goes a long way, but, um, 
Yeah, you just add a little bit of that in there. That's unpleasant. That's quite nice. Is it quite nice? Even neat. Really? Mm. Yeah, it's good. It's just, yeah, you don't want, like, you don't want to just take and it right out of that. And the colour that comes out well, of it. Well, that's what's really nice about it, yeah. And, and this is what your mum said, you're not going to be able to roll it. They were like, there's no way. <laughs> <laughs> it's too hard. Don't tell her. It's so much work. <laughs> it's labor intensive. I was like, guys, relax. I can do this. <laughs> so then basically you take this, right? Put a little bit in your hand. You're going to fill it with your... This is now the same thing here. So it's got your sofrito and all your spices ah. and your prawns. It's just kind of like, like a that. dumpling almost. It is, completely. Yeah. And that's the thing that's interesting is that, like, you know, just in traveling, I love the fact that, like, you'll see everybody eats the same stuff. We all eat the same stuff. There's always like just one little variation, one little thing that makes it different. But you know, yeah, it's a dumpling basically. And look at that. And then voila, and then you just stick it in your oil. And you deep frying it. Yep, we're gonna deep fry it. For how long? Um, really just until it's golden. You'll see the color start to change. It's gonna get nice and dark. And I'll show you. Got some done over here. Because obviously all the insides are cooked already, so yes, you're just exactly. cooking off. So you're, yeah, you're basically just cooking off the cassava. Oh, wow, I can't wait to taste it. I love tasting stuff that I'm not used to. Do you know what I mean? There well, was flavours in there, yeah. and you're cooking shift with ingredients. Shift our rubbish out of the way. I know, no sorry, worries. look, we're a bit messy. Right. OK. Notes here, OK. <laughs> all right, awesome. And then here, these are the magically perfectly done. <laughs> I'm going to try. Yeah, go for it. You know, yeah, I've gone in with it. I'm going to do a fingers. I know you Yeah, have. go for it. Mm. Oh, wow. wow. It's really good. That's right? worth the hard work, isn't it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> they are good. They are really good. Yeah. For more of the same, just click here. The thing is, with a cake, what you want is... When you're doing a cake, you stand want... Back. Yeah, stand back. because it could... We'll do it slowly. Is there any way of not making that just... Well, like that, just I guess. Just do it slowly. Do it really slowly. Yeah. I've and done that with icing before and covered myself in it. We've worn quite a lot of food on here, haven't we? Yeah, <laughs> we have. But isn't it lovely when you... It goes in the air and then you inhale the yes. air. Oh, yes. I love that. That's the best bit.